A professional butler is somebody who is loyal, flexible, discreet, hardworking, honest, but most important, it is a person who has the ability to put somebody else's wishes before your own. Join me for a day in the life of Trisha Paytas' assistant. Oh my gosh, look what I got. I finally got this in the mail. Thank you. Not sponsored, although I should be. I think, I think it's an affiliate link, rather. They sent me this. Well, let me show it to you. Ah, it's so pretty. Thank you, Forever Rose, New York, for sending me this beautiful bouquet of roses. They're so nice. So thank you guys for that. You guys are amazing. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link down below to save some coin at checkout for any type of special event or gifts. Okay, we got a lot to talk about. I've been trying to get through this video all day and it seems like there's drama after drama after drama, girl. Okay, I'm gonna get through it. Thank you, Evil Beauty. Here we go. Let's talk. Cause I feel like we're gonna talk about Trisha Paytas and Moses being, um, the assistant and I, I have a lot to say I have notes I wrote down all my notes about the situation but I gotta get through video first of all you know I love Chanel and they came out not sponsored although I should be they came out with this new like bronzer look how big it's super huge like yes we've seen this before but this is jumbo size they made their existing bronzer freak oh did I break it jumbo size so it's super huge it's just Oh my God, I can't. So now you can just be, uh, it's just like perfect for social media. So all the people who want to hate on you, you got this jumbo size, like, uh, whatever. Let's talk. The, is it worth the price? Hell no. It was not worth the price. This is like almost a hundred dollars, girl. But I had to have it because it's so big. I freaking, it's like, oh my God, okay. But anyway, speaking of sponsors and what is worth the price, check this out. This is why I'm, I'm, I always tell y'all guys, if you love unboxings, you're gonna love this part of the video. This is why I tell you guys, I always talk about Manscaped, when you order from them and you get their packages, look, when you get like their bundles, check this out. It comes like this, everything you see here, you get everything there, presentation, it's, oh my God, it's so good. Look at that. You get the chargers, the underwear, the shavers, the formulas, and underneath here, you get even more stuff. Look, you lift it, you get even more stuff down there. It's, I mean, it just keeps on going. So that's why I always talk about Manscaped and the stuff that you should get. And I'll, my link will be down below. Like discount automatically applies at checkout. And not just for Father's Day or Mother's Day or anything. Birthday, bar mitzvah, or just, just because. So check out Manscaped. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring this video. There's so much. Okay, so let's talk because I feel like we need to talk. We're going to talk about how Moses is the assistant now. And he said that he was promoted to manager. That's what Trisha Paytas said out of her own mouth. And in the beginning, Trisha Paytas like joked about it and then she got kind of like, of course, when everyone jumped on it and then she took an opportunity to get upset about it. And then now she's like joking about it again. So she could, she could never just like be on one side of something. But the thing is like, I have a lot of friends, right? And maybe you ladies can relate. Cause you know, I'm always the girl. I'm always the girl like, you know, when I go on a date, I'm always the one reaching into my Birkin to pull, you know, to pay for something. So I get it. The other guys, most of these guys broke the house. You already know. And shout out to Frozen Luxury for the bag. I freaking love He sent me this bag. I love you, love you, love you. If you check him on Instagram, tell him, tell him thank you. He'll be shook. Okay. But most of my friends, and I, I wrote this down on my notes because I wanted to like handle this very carefully, right? I have a lot of friends that one partner works. And the other one isn't. It's not a. It's it's like an equal relationship because not both have to work. Like not not one. Like not one person has to be the breadwinner. Like someone has to take care of the house, has to take care of the kids because raising kids is a full time job, and people don't ever talk about that. Or like just if you have a huge house and managing a house, it's it's a lot, and it's cheaper to have the partner do that as opposed to hiring like a house sitter or a butler or some or assistant whatever. So. It's a working relationship. Yes, he doesn't clock in, but he does like, or he or she manages the other end of like just keeping up with appointments and life and bills. And it's just, it's a lot, right? So I wrote down here that the one that doesn't work at least contributes to the relationship in, in some way, okay? Um, and that, and that he's not a photographer and taking like hundreds of pictures of Trisha and like making making the TikToks where he's like playing into him being an assistant and stuff like that. Like I just don't feel like like there there were a lot of people who would be like, I'm not gonna do that for you. Like 
we're equal, we're in a relationship together, I'm not your sister, I am your lover, I am your man, I am your woman, like that type, that type vibe, you know? But with the Moses thing, he just seems to, to go along. I, do I think that Moses benefits financially by being with Trisha Paytas? Yeah. Do I think that Moses uh, benefits by not having to work because of the, the status that Trisha Paytas has? Yeah. I think he just kind of coattail rides. In, in a way, in a way, in a way. Because sub, because I what has he done since being in a relationship with Trisha Paytas? And since he's been with Trisha, I haven't seen him do anything. Or even prove. I mean, he started a YouTube channel, but... I don't ever see that even popping off, right? So it's it goes in the sense of like when I meet guys sometimes, like they have they have their own job, they have a little they have their own, their own little car or whatever, but then they start hanging around me. And, you know, I'm always on the move, I'm always traveling, I have, I have a lot going on, very busy. And so when they come, they t tend to like stop working, and they just become like a like a bitch boy, like a bad boy. They're, they're like the ones holding holding my bags down, opening my doors. I'm like, no, I have. I have people for that. Like you are supposed to be in a relationship, but now you're you're becoming like I guess what I'm trying to say like you, you know what I'm saying? Like what are you doing? Like if Trisha met Moses and he had a job and had his own world going on, and all of a sudden they get together, and he just leaves all that just to start helping her do everything. Like that's kind of like demasculates him in some way. Like because Trisha should have. A man that does his own thing. If Trisha wants a man to help her as much as she needs Moses to, then she should hire someone to help her do that. And it seems like she doesn't. She doesn't. She don't even like who. Who are Trisha Paytas' friends? We never see her with any friends. And if and the fact that the time that we have, she fights with them. And there's this big online fallout. And does I mean? Let's not forget Shane Dawson, James Charles. Oh my God! All her exes. Every friend she has, she's even her own sister at one point, they got to some drama. And they, they try to keep that, like, on the low. But Peter Mon had said, he, he put it really, really well. I'm going to roll you the clip. Here we go. Like, here's the thing that I think is the worst, most offensive thing about Trisha Paytas, okay? You want to know what I personally think is the biggest issue with Trisha Paytas? If you guys want to talk about all of the communities that she's offended, okay, or all of the communities that she has said at some time or another that she has belonged to, okay, that she has participated in, whether it's Judaism, whether it's that she said that she identifies as transgender, whether it's that she identifies as having DID, whether it's that she wants to, whatever it is, okay, you want to talk about the recovery community, you want to talk about all the different religious and spiritual beliefs that she has had, you want to talk about all the different things that she has talked about out there, okay, it's that there is no consistency in her continuing to talk about those things down the road. So it's like they only appear and are talked about as long as it lasts of interest to Trisha Paytas, which is why I think so many people have issue with her telling these things because it's like, it's not like three years down the road you're continuing to talk about these things. Where to most people, okay, they are continuing to talk about these things three, five, 10, 20 years down the road. These are big issues in most people's lives, let alone to have all of them, okay, to have 5, 10, and 20 of these issues that you're dealing with, and you're not talking about any of them five years down the road, except for when somebody asks you in a live stream, well, what about two years ago when you said this? Oh, yeah, like I'm dealing with that, blah, 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 whatever, you know, or, you know, all the times that she said that she was in therapy five times, three times a week, right? And then did that just stop? Well, what was that transition like? How, why, where was that decision made? That one day you were in it and the next day you weren't? Or were you never in it to begin it? Okay? Or did Mary and Moses solve all your problems? Like, this is where, to me, Trisha Paytas is so problematic. Because if she was talking about, like, I just like peanut butter and jelly, and I'm going to eat peanut butter and jelly as long as I live, and you're never going to stop me from eating peanut butter and jelly, and then the week next week she said, I don't like peanut butter and jelly anymore, I'm just going to eat peanut butter, butter, okay? Now, I'm sure some of the peanut butter fans out there and the jelly fans were going to get kind of upset with Trisha Paytas, but we're not talking about PB&J. I just think, do I think that Trisha Paytas makes uh, Moses do things that he doesn't want to do? Yeah. Do I think that, that Moses tends to just go along with it yeah i mean there's there's plenty of clips where she is saying that he's on the spectrum of the rainbow or something like that and he's just like like it's like what it's i don't know it's like she's she's kind of rude to him i don't think that trisha deserves him and i'm gonna have to go against what some other people say 
I don't ever see them like super real lovey-dovey intimate or anything like that like I just don't get those vibes but somehow their relationship works and every relationship is different and it's for them and good for them if they want it to last and whatever but girl I just feel like Moses is just along for the ride and whatever he can get he can get and he's just there Trisha Paytas can just walk all over him the house and he's just gonna allow it because he's like, mm, you know, I get I give my little clout, I get my little fame, and that's just the that's the way it is. I just think that they should have never gotten married. They should have never gotten uh pregnant, and that Trisha should have just hired him to be like a manager. Cause she don't even have a match. She says that her mom and her sister do it. No, she's a real one. I think that Moses probably could have propelled her even further. But Trisha Paytas has a tendency to, and we've known this because we've been following her for years, she has a tendency to self-sabotage relationships. And the time is ticking and clicking until the relationship with Moses ends. Just saying. Just saying. So let me know what you think about that drama in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I love you so much. <laughs>